employees safe and away from harm. We ask that you guide this council in the decisions that they make for the citizens of the city and that you <coughs> that you be with us um, uh, to make just and fair decisions. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The minutes of our October 26th meeting were distributed. Were there any questions or additions to the minutes? I move they be adopted. We have it first by Mr. Lockridge. Second. Second by Dr. Thompson. All those in favor say aye. aye. The meeting, the minutes of October 26th passed unanimously. We don't have any old business, so we'll move directly to our new business. And our new business, our first item is request consideration of an ordinance establishing the April 2016 general election. Mr. Moore. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It is a, a standard that every other year that you pass an ordinance setting forth the guidelines for the upcoming election. There will be an election on April 5th, 2016. That will to uh, decide the seats two, four, six, and at large seat eight. Uh, the only thing I would call to your attention is uh, in addition to the election date, the filing period for candidates will be Assuming you approve this ordinance, will open on Thursday, January 21, and close on Thursday, February the 4th. So uh, with that, Mr. Mayor, again, pretty much the standard one that you pass every other year. We'd recommend you approve this on first reading. Thank you. Any comments, questions? I move the approval of this ordinance. Have a first by Dr. Thompson, second by Mr. John Roberts. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Oppose. The consideration for the ordinance passes unanimously. Our next item of new business is request consideration of settlement and release agreement with Triangle Construction Company. Mr. Moore. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think I'll let uh, I see Mike Glenn, who is also representing the city on this case, and Frankie out. There's a few questions y'all had, and I'll ask them if they'll summarize those. and. Um, I don't think there were many changes, a couple small things. I don't know if any questions except the name on the Amsterdam City Recreation Center, Mr. Curtis pointed out, and that's been uh, taken care of in the final agreement. And the other matters, I think we have completely resolved. There's one page I got today that's missing yep. the back sheet. On the we have to have to have one page added to the one of the exhibits, but everything else has been agreed upon. But, but the amount and the work has been agreed upon by Jeff Martin, our expert, to, for them to do in addition to the $135,000 to be paid. Once we get those, that solidified, we'd ask the court. I mean, maybe we might want to back up and, and just maybe give a general recap of how we got to where we got to. And I don't know if, Mr. Glenn, you, can you yeah. recap? Us, um, I could go over the notes in executive yes. summary, but I'll let uh, uh, Mike do it since he's. Uh, Mr. McLean did an executive summary. I believe this is part of part of your record, but this started back in 2012 at the big flood, and it was a, really a flood down at the recreation center. Uh, it, it uncovered a lot of defects in the planning, and are in the plans that were used to create this groundwater system around the building. It also pointed up some shortcomings of the building itself. We uh, did an extensive investigation of it, the city did, and uh, Chris uh, Eberhardt, the city engineer, did a great deal of that and did a good job on uh, uh, checking out what needed to be done and Ted Merle also was real active at that time and, and got a professional group of engineers from Greenville to represent the city and they ended up <clears throat> identifying the defects and recommending the remedy 
and then the city started the work. We, we first uh, looked at uh, triangle construction. It was a general contractor uh, for the city. Uh, the architect, Neil Prince and Partners, and uh, the engineering firm that, that did the work to plan the bypass system was the Seaman Whiteside and Associates. So we looked at all those and we first uh, got everybody together and tried to, to get them to enter into some sort of an agreement to see if we could get things done. And that went almost nowhere. So then we, uh, we tried to uh, get the three of them to join us in one arbitration or trial all together. They refused that. We had arbitration agreements with two of them, uh, Seaman Whiteside, I'm sorry, the, the architect and Triangle. We had arbitration clauses in our contracts with them. Seaman Whiteside did not have an arbitration clause, which meant that we could not arbitrate with them unless they agreed to do it. They did not agree. We filed arbitration for arbitration against the two we had agreements with and requested that they be consolidated. They objected to that and we lost our effort to consolidate those. So we ended up with two arbitrations, one with Triangle, one with uh, the architect, and one <coughs> with uh, Seaman Whiteside is, is a, will be a jury trial in court here in Anderson. The first one to come up was the Triangle uh, arbitration. It was a couple of weeks ago when, when we appeared before you. We had just recently ag agreed to the settlement that you had before you, and they agreed <coughs> to, uh, to pay a total of $175,000 and there was also a list of repairs that our expert Jeff Martin uh, and said needed to be done to stop the leaking of the roof and the wall system. And there are a number of leaks. Bobby Bevel tell me if it doesn't quit raining soon or we get some money, he's going to drown <laughs> over there. And he's he's close to right. It really <laughs> needs needs the repair work. We we got. Triangle agreed to do all of them except the one big one. It was big because you couldn't tell exactly what needed to be done to fix it properly. At the low end, it, it'd be about $100,000. At the high end, it'd be probably twice that. <coughs> so, uh, but, but they have agreed to do all the other repairs with the assistance of, of our expert, Jeff Martin, and, and, and the roofer that they had used, who Jeff has worked with quite, quite a bit. So they'll be beginning on those repairs very soon. The, the payment will be made within 10 days after both sides sign the agreement, and it'll be submitted uh, uh, later on. So that's pretty much where it is. We still have the uh, other two cases. We just last week got the uh, Seaman Whiteside case scheduled for May the 9th mm -hmm. in, a, in a jury trial. Hopefully we'll have a mediation before that and maybe get a chance to uh, save on that one and, and get something worked out there. So we still have two more cases pending and, and the case against Seaman Whiteside would be potentially the biggest case financially. It, it cost in the neighborhood of a half million dollars to uh, put in a new groundwater system and, and so forth. Some of that would probably have been done or maybe should have been done back when the job was first done, but it wasn't. So we'll be, we'll be asking for damages from them and then uh, from Seaman White, I mean from Neil Prince and Partners for the defects in the, uh, in the uh, planning of the drawings for the building. Good. Thank you, Mr. Glenn. Any, any questions, Mr. Chapman? The uh, the item that they're saying that they're not going to repair. Um, you said there's about a hundred thousand on the low end for an item that needs to be repaired, and it's two hundred on the high end. Is that correct? Isn't that pretty close, Frankie? Well, um, but they're, they're two different. 
theories. Their, their position is that that's not necessary to fix it. But, uh, and it's, complete, it's a redesign sort of. But if they're not planning to do anything to it, how is it going to correct itself? I think they're doing some repair work. Some of this repair work may fix it anyway. That's their position all along is that it was not necessary. So our, our expert said what they say needs to be done may work. But we're not willing to say if it doesn't work, we're through. Okay, and so, so there's a he's going to recommend that the city go ahead and, 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 and do the less expensive repair. And he believes it'll work. But if, but that, that's included in the money damages. So that's what our position is. Our, our experts mostly said, you know, the design was probably 70%. Okay, so. Fault, and, and that would be the pretty much of a design fault. Okay. And Triangle has taken We have that some recourse. Yeah. We have some recourse if it doesn't fix it. Okay. Right. Tri Still Triangle right. has taken the position all along. This is not a construction problem. This is a design problem. And uh -huh. our expert says, well, it's some of both. Okay. Don, I think that there's some panels regarding whether or not you ought to replace the panels with something else or this interim measure, as I understand it, to try to reseal how those panels all fit in. Now, that's my layman's. You, you can lift and cough them, and they think that, that may or may not fit, but well, that may fit, but it does. But the, the suggestion, if you don't do that, would be to completely replace them, which obviously would be a whole lot more expensive. Okay. Would, would, would be, excuse me. Would there be any warranties? You know, like you said, this may fix it, but it may not. Some of the work is they're doing is warranty work, and, yeah, the roof that they have, warranted to fix leaks some 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 of the work whatever can be done what under the warranty the will be done under the warranty okay. but yeah. in the end what you'd be approving is uh, the, the triangle would pay one hundred seventy five thousand dollars whoops is that right yep and um, and then again if you do approve this and that would relieve them plus this other work and then I think the term is what's the term you use there, Frankie? They're relieved from. They'll any, be released. Yeah, from any yeah. From anything up to now, but they would be responsible. So basically, you're you you guys are comfortable with where we are right now in the process with the we, two we other think cases. It's a fair resolution. We right. think if we'd come out of this arbitration with this figure, we'd have been fairly satisfied with. It. Okay. Any other questions, guys? I just have one more, Mr. Chap. Just the last one is. Um, Item three, it just it talks about a maintenance program for maintaining yeah. after it's done. We'll have that in place to make sure that. that yeah, and that was our obligation anyway. Okay, well, okay. they just wanted to call it to our attention. <laughs> they, they said some of our problems, lack of maintenance. We disagreed with that, mm -hmm. but that's been a contention the whole time. Okay. So it, once this is done and we've signed, then the work will begin. Yes. yes, and then they'll write a check, and then again we have other people that are, have other issues, like the drainage with the uh, semen white sides, and then just some design issues that we'll continue to pursue those legally. So this is just kind of the first step. So Bobby won't drown over there. <laughs> Good. We hope not. <laughs> Anything else, guys? Make a motion we accept uh, for general approval for second. B two. First by the mayor pro tem, second by. Mr. Lockridge, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Uh, opposed? That passes unanimously. A last item of new business is request consideration of an agreement to purchase 301 South Murray Avenue from Benson Street Properties, LLC. Mr. Moore. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Again, just kind of go back in time. You've already approved two agreements with Benson Street Properties, LLC. That's Steve K. Uh, one of those was regarding the development of the event center, and uh, that would be a $200,000 development incentive grant based on the revenues that would come from the development. Uh, the second piece was a lot like the Bleckley Inn. The parking around the uh, event center certainly needs to be improved and coordinated with the construction of the new building. So you also approved that you would use up to $420,000 of your TIF dollars 
to um, improve that parking area behind this where the event center will be. Now, what this agreement does is the 420, let me describe this piece of property. I'm sorry I don't have a map, but basically from South Murray, some people remember this, the old Hess station, now Spinks owns it. It was just a few little covers and all there. Coming back towards Maine, bordered by West Market on your left and, and uh, West Church. So it comes all the way up to the back of those buildings. The Remnant Shop, the Fox, Palmer Drugs, and what will be this building, we'll kind of square that off. So everything from the back of those buildings all the way to Murray will be included in this $420,000 you've already approved. The piece that wasn't, that we anticipated this was coming and talked to you about in executive session, just need to negotiate a price. So what you're now doing is you would be purchasing from Benson Street, Steve K, that Hess slash Sphinx property. Okay, that would square this, this parking lot off. Um, so what, that, what the agreement is that you would pay 200000 for the property. Steve, if you need it, he's agreed to let you pay it in $50,000 installments because the total of this plus up to four twenty might stretch your TIF revenues for a couple of years. So we just went ahead and on the safe side, so let's look for installments again. If the TIF revenue comes in well, you can pay him off. His interest rate seems to be pretty reasonable, 1.52 if you want to extend it. You, know, you never know when another project downtown may come along and you need TIF dollars. So $200,000 uh, in $50,000 increments at 1.52 should you need those. And what that is based on, uh, Steve purchased the property for $175,000, and he will take down all the pieces and he will leave you a clear piece of property with all the environmental stuff so you won't have any restrictions on getting that parking lot built. And now, again, much like the Blakely Inn, which you've experienced before, the, like the entrance, the stone, and some of the things around that, it certainly worked nice. Mr. K did that as part of his contract to, to redo the building, and then you just reimbursed him. Okay, and we already have estimates from our city engineering should not exceed 420. That's where that limit came from. The designs would be similar to your other parking lots like the John Street with lighting and landscaping. And uh, then it would also tie in some things that uh, the event center needs like a turnaround. Again, similar to the, uh, the nice uh, amenities of, of the Blakely. So again, what you're doing is you're gonna, you would agree to pay for this piece of property clean 200,000 and that uh, we, so we'd recommend that to you uh, tonight that you approve that any questions comments mr. Chapman the the parking lot itself the entire in its entirety is all will all be first come first serve no reserve parking right. for, Great for the general yeah. public yes so public in, the end, you own it it's all public pro property parking. John I was thinking behind the old Palmetto building. Yes, ma'am, what about that? The parking behind there, where does that fit in or does it? It does not. That is private that goes with the Palmetto building. Okay, but it's in pretty good shape, that parking. Uh, well, I mean, you know, again, it could, it's, it's okay. <laughs> it's functional. Yeah, we're hoping that we're going to land a nice economic development project there in the near future. I think ideally in that's Glenn's in, assignment find uh, somebody and we did I mean the the downtown committee downtown mm -hmm. committee um, talked about this a lot I think one of the things that we're hopeful is is that um, with that parking lot and with the event center but mainly with just clearing off that parking lot it encourages um, some east-west uh, depth of, of downtown um, we've got some some properties on Murray Street. I think hopefully um, we'll be able to develop and even um, I'm in hopes that you know the the the, the old restaurant, the fox, the pub beside and the Palma, and we can just continue to maybe try to have some growth down um, South Main also. Yeah, Ms. Harbin. Have first by Mr. Harbin. Second. Second by Dr. Thompson. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye.
Opposed? That passes unanimously. Administrative briefing, Mr. Moore. Uh, before we go through, the only thing we have is a calendar, but before we get into that, uh, I would like to take the opportunity, I know most of you have met your new assistant city manager, but I'd also like to introduce him to those who are watching on ECTV or maybe here, but we have uh, David McEwen. David? So, uh, Thank you, Mayor and Council. I appreciate it. look forward to joining the Anderson team and the community, and I uh, look forward to working with each of you and, and Linda and the city staff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as far as the calendar, in the coming week, uh, certainly on Wednesday, I hope we'll all take time, even though it will be a holiday for the city, to remember our veterans. That will be Veterans Day, and the city will be closed, and there will be a number of activities going on in the community. Uh, there is the Anderson County Municipal Association is on Thursday. Belton is the host. If you would uh, like to go, you need to let Brandy know, and she'll make the reservations for you. A couple other things as we enter the holiday season. Uh, we do have a public works committee that is to look at several things regarding the sanitation carts that have come up in community meetings. But the big day, Dr. Thompson, I'm not worried, too worried about Bobby getting wet. He worked all day in the rain, as, the, as his whole staff did, to make sure that uh, the city was on schedule for the holiday ice opening. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that will be on Friday week, the 20th. And uh, there'll be a little bit more from the staff regarding what all is going to be going on. This will be your only meeting based on the business for November. Then you have the Thanksgiving holidays, and then uh, you can look on to December. And since we won't meet again, we would remind you that the uh, employee Christmas lunch is on the 3rd. Tree lighting on the 4th. Man, it's hard to believe we're talking about uh, all the Christmas holidays, but uh, it is rapidly upon us. And I'll let you look at the rest of the parade on the 6th. So, again, you'll be getting some things as far as the, the, those uh, early December notices from the staff. Mr. Mayor, that's all we have. Thank you, sir. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. First by Mr. Locker, second by Mr. Chapman. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? We stand adjourned.